I'm I'm sorry for uh, the delay and uh, a little bit of technical issues here and there. But okay, the first position is black to move, and I see a lot of people here giving the answer, which is knight e3. Okay, wonderful. So knight e3, and you fork. And queen e6, what do you do next? Black to move. How do you continue? Well, we see a lot of people here today, uh, but let's first find the move here for black. What would you do here? Queen into e6 is one possibility and then if he takes knight into e6, what's your plan? Because then uh, if you take here, he will take back with the knight. Oops, I didn't have to make the move. I just wanted to show uh, and then he would take and attack your rook. So you need to be careful. Think, 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 think. Queen h4 comes to mind, but I guess there is this knight here, so you shouldn't blunder your queen. Okay, today there are so many people here that, you know, the chat is flowing really quick, but I'll try to capture. So, so only when you get a good answer, try to write down, okay? So bishop into d4 is one possibility that is being suggested by a lot of people and uh, this is one move and the other move is queen h4 where everyone is blundering a queen it seems. <laughs> Wake up guys come on let's not blunder a queen. Uh, so bishop into d4 what I want all of you is to think of blacks whites next move don't just stop there. What will black do after bishop? Uh, what will white do after bishop d4? Would he take back? Would he move the queen? What what would happen? Bishop d4, n d4, queen h4. So here I see Adit Bhatia, Sairam, Sampat, Shivam Choudhury. Many of you getting this answer. Please bear with me if I can't get all the names because there are so many messages so I might be missing out on names but well I'll try to look at it main thing is that you have to improve here so bishop d4 the point is after nd4 now to go queen h4 good move now you are attacking the bishop and did you see that there is a check here coming up or did you miss it black to move what will you play By the way, I just saw that someone had actually contributed on this chat uh, some amount. Yes, it is by Molai Patra who's contributed 40 rupees. Thank you, Molai. That's very kind of you. Uh, the main aim of the stream that it's completely free for your chess improvement. But in case if you enjoy it and would like to contribute something, you can do so from the super chat. We will try to make sure that all of this money is given to uh, to the fight against coronavirus, against COVID-19. Okay, so we have two options here. King h7 and rook g7. These are the two moves. <clears throat> what would you do here? Because uh, you have to be careful maybe both the moves are winning but if you if you aren't very sure you must think rook g7 and king h7 is there any difference between the two or both the moves win Rook g7, queen h7. Yeah, actually, I mean, 
this is anyway hanging there is no way to defend it but uh, maybe your opponent will try for king h2 at some point to defend this and it could be nice to have the rook free at that point to give a check here you know on g2 so maybe king h7 looks more correct because if you go queen c7 i can play rook g7 that's my thinking so let's i'm going to make king h7 here which is the correct move queen into f4 of course uh, i can just take on h3 now and yes we've done it so how about solving one more uh, let's go to the next position this is black to move well doesn't look so simple by the way all of you here have you worked on your notations this was one of the homeworks yesterday i'm seeing that the notation is pretty good today no one's giving any wrong notations as such so black to move here what would you do try to first have a look at the entire picture the king is here the knight is sort of hanging and your king is on h3 it's safe there are no real checks coming to it so okay very nice someone is very quick here uh, ravi kumar v also adit bhatia both of them suggest the move e5 very interesting e5 hmm. and the the what's the plan with e5 because there are so many moves that the black or that the white queen can make actually are there so many moves now one thing which i want all of you here to adhere to and i'm going to be very strict about it if you give me only one move i won't call out your moves because let's say after e5 it's not like your opponent is going to say i resign you know he's going to say okay e5 i'm going to move my queen somewhere so where with the where will the queen go and the one who writes more variations okay don't be in a hurry to write down your move and say hey i, I got it you know i understand you got it maybe someone will say queen c3 check finish what how is it finish you know the king can go to a6 the king can go to b6 he can play queen b4 there are so many possibilities in the position so don't take shortcuts that's the most important thing okay i have some variations now coming in which is arnav maheshwari who says e5 queen b4 and queen a7 mate okay good that's one variation anything else e5 queen b4 queen a7 e5 queen e3 queen d2 adit bhatia says nc4 i think adit you are doing really well today seems like you have a you have had a good night sleep <laughs> uh good so sagar bhasagi says we'll give full calculations yes this is important by the way remember in this training session you are not here to impress me okay because you know i'm already impressed you came at 9 o'clock i asked you to come you came what is more important is that at the end of 21 days you should have improved as a player and these are some of the things which i want you to improve like when a position is given to you don't rush to give the answer so for example queen c3 check shouldn't end there should be like will the king move to a6 will the king go to b6 can i take on c1 no the knight is defended by the queen you have to think all of that and when you do that you will automatically become a better player okay so the right move is e5 and as aditya ramnathan rightly points out the queen is sort of trapped you know this is beautiful it's like the queen here cannot go anywhere this knight is an absolute monster it controls f5 it controls e4 c4 all these squares of the queen and on any other square that the queen goes it's going to be a knight c4 check and pick up the queen so 
so beautiful and and on the last square which seems like a safe square well you corner your own king and that's a mate so that's a nice one i'm going to give you a one last position before we move on to what i have planned for the day okay it's the last one okay itohan idahosa says i followed your tactics rule and i gained an extra 100 tactics points wow that's wonderful okay white to move should be easy for all of you here all all are really strong uh well it's it's a really uh not a very tough position but well it's just about getting uh into the flow by the way ritu raj says how to get premium membership in chessbase account uh, this is what i'll show you after we solve this position yeah queen g4 h g4 rook h8 this is been mentioned by adit bhatia also he is given good line bishop d8 yes i'm not going to call out his move queen g4 h g4 rook h8 says c2 minocha checkmate no c2 it's not a checkmate bishop goes back to d8 remember this bishop can go back shri hari joshi naman sati yasiru jockson don't give me one moves okay you need to give me the entire line aditya ramnathan has got the right answer well done uh, noob gameplay is trying hard he has given queen b4 ab4 bishop d8 well one of the major things that i am going to keep repeating is improve your notation okay this is g4 not b4 and you have to improve it because if you don't get notations right you can't speak the chess language you can't calculate well so uh, you know anand said chess is a language and the top players are fluent in it okay what does he mean it's just like a language if you are good at something you need to be if you want to be good at something you need to be fluent at it so the most important thing that all of you are going to do is learn the notation and i have already told you there are certain uh, websites out there which can you know you can a square gets lit up and you can say okay this is e4 f4 so on but a very nice way is to ask some of your friends or someone to just point out a square on the chess board and you can call out so something like i'm going to just show you b6 f6 e3 c3 f1 h6 f8 c8 a8 a4 a3 you know the board should become a part of you i know i'm repeating this from yesterday but it is so important i know people playing chess for years and years not learning the notation okay so all those who have mentioned queen g4 h g4 rook h8 well done but it's very important to actually see oops sorry i think i just made the move for black as well which caused the problem but the important thing was after rook h8 bishop d8 the intermediate move was bishop into e5 pinning the queen and the king and then after queen into e5 you take rook d8 and it's a checkmate okay so that was the answer uh let's move to something that i wanted to teach you for today well for all those who are asking how to get chessbase account you go to chessbase.in website you go to the online shop here and you type account over here and you find chessbase account for 3 months for 1 year it's just uh, you can buy it from there and what we were training right now was from the chessbase account here so solve tactics and these are all the features here okay so 
you can get if you are an Indian and you are staying in seven other countries that chess base India serves uh, Thailand Bangladesh Philippines uh, Indonesia Sri Lanka uh, you can get it from there okay so let's get to something important I'm going to give you a position now uh, yeah we change the view so only the chessboard in front of you now and so I when I thought about what should I be teaching in this course for 21 days I said well I can show you some interesting games uh, I could also show you something related to say tactics I could also show you something related to end games I can show you some great games of great players of the past but what I felt is that I should try to teach you the method to think in chess if I can teach you a method to think in any given position then it's like teaching you how to fish you know it's one of my favorite quotes which is like give a man a fish for a day and you help him for a day but teach him how to fish and you make him capable for a lifetime you know something like that so I want to give show you the method in which I think in any given position it might not be the best way it may not be something that you know top players do but it has helped me and I think it's a good starting point for you. You can then go to your own method and I can go, uh, you know, you can improve it. But at least knowing this is going to help you. Okay. Well, thanks a lot to Harish Kumar who just contributed 40 rupees. Uh, this is really nice. All of you are appreciating what is being done here. This is more than sufficient. The amount is, of course, uh, secondary. It's not at all important. What you are giving and the the feelings behind it are great okay so i'm going to show you this game with my good friend snehal bosle in 2007 he's a he's a strong player from mumbai and we both have played several events and at this tournament in 2007 was the first time i read this book called reassess your chess okay this is the fourth edition at that point i read the third edition of the book reassess your chess and it kind of changed me you know jeremy silman who's the author he gave certain things to follow how to assess every position and i tried to do in this tournament which was in pune and i want to show you uh, the results of it so let's begin i played d4 my opponent played knight f6, c4, e6, knight c3, bishop b4. And my question to all of you is, what is this opening called? Okay. <laughs> Anish Dige says, give a man a fish and you feed him for one time, teach him how to fish and he will deplete the entire aquatic habitat well <laughs> that's an interesting point of view i'm not going to disagree with you on that okay harish kumar very kind of him he's contributed another 80 rupees thank you so much for this uh, very nice of you okay What was my rating at this point? My rating was 2150. But I would say by current standards, which is 13 years later, I should be rated something around 1800 or 1900. Not very strong. But at that point, you know, it, the competition was not as much as today in 2007. So my opponent was also rated somewhere around 2000. Yes, so all of you have given the right answer here. Sri Ram, Ananta Krishna, Anudeep, Tharun, Isha Nagarwal, Aditya Ramnathan, Sudhakar, Cute Babies, Itohan, Nimi, uh, Yashpal Nirmalkar, Abhishek Modak, Yasiru Mihiranga, 
शांत कुमार गुडला ऑल ऑफ यू सेट निम्जो इंडियन महुआ घोष श्रीदेवी रोंगाली जयसुख राठौर होनी अरोरा आई थिंक आई टू स्टॉप कॉलिंग आउट नेम सो मेनी ऑफ यू आर गिविंग द राइट आंसर्स बिट्टू राज ड्रंक एंड स्टाइन सागर भसागी राजेश वर्मा I'm sorry, I cannot cannot call out everything, but all the names. But so many of you are here. Uh, great! It's a great crowd. You know, talking to a crowd who knows chess is amazing. So I went e3. This is known as the Rubinstein system. E3. On one hand, I close the bishop over here. It's not a good idea. But on the other hand. i'm saying to black hey look your bishop on b4 is kind of misplaced you know if you want to play the queen's gambit why your bishop should be on e7 if you're putting it on b4 i can afford the move e3 because i may win this bishop so that's a thought process anyway my opponent played c5 i went knight g2 now with the knight uh, i try to develop my knight and defend my c3 knight and my opponent went here castles and i played the move a3 okay so what did my opponent do here he he took because if he doesn't take he goes back i'll just win a pawn d into c5 and then i'll save it with e b4 and i'll be better so he took i took i'm not going to uh talk a lot about the opening phase right now because let's come back to it after some time yes uh quest said you played yesterday in the same way sort of similar but yesterday i had my bishop in the online game already on d3 here i played knight e2 before so uh my opponent played d6 here i went bishop e2 queen e7 and castles okay let's take stock here and you tell me who do you think is better please give good answers by the way <clears throat> uh say to minochi says why didn't you play bd3 before any2 it's a perfectly valid move i am going to i played knight e2 here because it's also theory okay Jaydeep Chakraborty has said uh, has given 400 rupees that's very very nice Jaydeep thank you so much for your contribution uh, it's wonderful he uh, he says you said you like third edition more than fourth it's amazing as ben also mentioned in perpetual chess podcast how were you able to differentiate between editions well i would say third edition was what silman wrote and then he he sort of thought about what he has written he got feedback from people he said you know you have not considered this you have not considered that and then he sat down and he again wrote the entire book i think the fourth edition is a lot different from the third edition i wouldn't say that it's better or worse it's just that you know when you are young and you had an experience about something it's just so vivid in your mind that you like it let's say if you are going to read the reassess your chess for the first time might as well do it the fourth edition you may like it more you know i have complete confidence i read the fourth edition as well it's really good but it's just like my sort of connection that i read the book i went to tournaments i started playing well i started seeing chess differently it's just very nice for me that feeling okay harish kumar thank you once again for 100 i think harish kumar is on a uh, a contributing spree he's contributed close to 200 more than 200 rupees thank you very much okay come on i have an act, uh, a question here so what is the assessment i have a few answers mahua ghost says equal okay someone said please come to the center okay yeah i should come to the center okay this is better now uh now don't be a sort of how can i put it lazy don't write better white plus equal write a bit more 
Upasana Dikshit says black is surely claiming an advantage. Why Upasana? Let me know. White has more space than black. White is slightly better says no spring chicken. Okay. Stehen 9000 says equal. Funny Verma says white is slightly better. Quest A says white as his pieces are active in development. Uh, Ayaya Bhatt says white is slightly better. Gaurav Sharma. What is Gaurav Sharma saying? White is better. Manan Upadhyay says white because of a strong center. Okay. Mayur Gondalekar says who is better because of black's two underdeveloped piece to white. I'd go with white slightly. Okay. Interesting. Shubham Kumar says white is slightly better because it developed almost all of his pieces. Well, first of all, it's black to move. Black will develop a piece now, say knight c6. Uh, secondly, I don't, I have not developed the bishop on c1. So, white is better by like one point. That's what Itohan Idosa says. Well, how do you get to one point? Pradeep Kanitkar says white is better here because he has double bishops and he's ahead in development. Okay, first person I read in the chat who says double bishops. Very interesting. Also, Andreas Genta has mentioned about the double bishop. So, well done. Uh, Edgar Lewis says, thanks Sagar for this moment. Okay, wonderful Edgar. Um, okay, there are a lot of, lot of messages, but I will say that the general thing which all of you have mentioned is white, ha white is slightly better because... He has the center, that's what you say, but okay, black can play e5 next move and get the center. The main difference I would say is that white has the bishop pair. And this is what I want you guys to notice, okay. Notice how the position, there are some differences. Black has two knights, white has two bishops. So you can say... Black has two knights and a bishop. I have two bishops and a knight. Okay, so that's one difference in the position. Uh, I would say white, I would prefer white slightly because of this very fact that white has two bishops. I don't see him ahead in development because the next move that was played by my opponent was knight c6. And you can see my bishop is not developed. His is not developed. It's kind of around equal development as such um, sorry he he uh, he didn't play knight c6 by the way he played b6 first sorry for that he wanted to put his bishop here on b7 but i would say white is slightly better because of the bishop pair okay we'll come to more details shortly now what do you do next white to move okay your opponent has played b6 what should you play Okay. Ayush Naik asks, how to read Silmans? How to reassess your chess book? Sidelines are difficult to execute on a real chess board. Well, if you are if you are patient and if you have a book with you and you know go through the sidelines, I don't think you have first of all 21 days in your hand, 20 days now. So you know. Okay. Mohini Bhave says, is how to reassess your chess beneficial to 1200? Definitely. I would say to anyone who plays chess, has knowledge of it, is playing tournaments, this will be useful. Okay. Uh, Bishop F3 suggested by Rajesh Verma, Noob Gameplay, Quest, Harsh Suryavanshi, Rajesh... Uh, who else? Aditya Ramnathan. Yasiru says B3. Kavyansh says E4. Probal says B4. So many different possibilities. Sri Ram Ananta Krishna says close the diagonal with E4. Okay, interesting. Abhishek Modak, Bishop F3, Prakash Ganesan, Pradeep Kanitkar. 
uh, all of you say bishop f3 interesting stehen says d5 interesting stehen is uh, drawing a leaf out of yesterday's game i think because we played d5 and we kind of closed this bishop on b7 i wouldn't say it's a bad move definitely not uh, it's a very interesting move d5 because let's say i am thinking what should black do uh, but i would say this is a possibility i mean i would go e5 here with black but the question is is does white have something better than this and to all the people who wrote bishop f3 here okay uh you know usually in my group class i would say how many bishop f3 raise your hand and everyone would raise their hand but here i can't do that i can't see you guys uh so bishop f3 all those who said this what are you going to do if i play bishop f b7 here what's your plan to all the people out there who said bishop f3 by the way this is something which is very important you are thinking you know i asked you a move you thought you thought and you told me the move i'm now trying to understand your thinking more so what's your plan after bishop b7 d5 is what itohan says he wants to play d5 okay interesting that after bishop b7 he wants to go d5 uh what else jaydeep chakrabarti says with e4 because with two bishops would like to open the center good that's a very nice point i'll come to it uh i did play e4 in the game but for all those who said bishop f3 bishop b7 if you now take here take you have done something that is not good for your position you know what did you do you actually had two bishops and you exchanged one of your bishops when you have the bishop pair you should try and keep the bishop pair in the position because now it becomes more tenable for uh, for black in this position to go knight d7 or knight c6 and he has a he has a decent position here so it's very important for you to not just make a move hey look bishop f3 the rook is hanging suppose my opponent doesn't see it wow i can win a rook but of course he will see it you know he'll play bishop b7 he's not going to make a, a a bad move like d5 which is a horrible move bishop b7 and yes some of you did mention here to play d5 uh, which is very nice but the point is after ed cd 95 i'm just not very happy with my bishop here you know it's by the way there are uh, two people who have contributed right now 10 dollars from anish dige and shrutim sanyal who's contributed 5 dollars amazing uh, anish dige says thanks for the lessons please focus less on the live chat and more on the chess as more people join in it will explode we don't get lessons from im every day also gudi padwa cha hardik shubhechha okay thank you anish for that i believe that you know when a live commentary happens interaction is important because let's say um, if if i'm just teaching you and not talking to you how am i going to sort of improve yes i know it's somehow blowing out of proportion here with more people joining in but that's why i want you guys to write only the things which we are discussing and something important um, but yes i'll try to keep a balance between the two also a big thanks to suhritam sanyal who's contributed 5 dollars love this channel thanks sagar thank you suhritam that's very kind of you also harish kumar has written here has given 40 rupees and said which opening is better for under 800 e4 or d4 hmm. well i can just say one thing is that when i was young i began with knight f3 first which was not a good option and then i started playing d4 but i just think that if you start with e4 first 
maybe it's much better to get open games develop your chess like an open player but there's no hard and fast rule i just feel it's much better to to play e4 you can always shift to positional lines later on you know okay so here this is my reasoning why bishop f3 i don't like so much it's like a move you make and then opponent makes a decent move and you have to exchange the bishop i played e4 and i, I like this much more because now if my opponent plays bishop b7 i will go d5 and if he takes i will take with the e pawn and now this guy can really be on a good diagonal on d3 okay so that was one of the reasons i played e4 okay now my opponent being a good player he played the move knight to c6 and he he said to me hey look i did play b6 i wanted to play bishop b7 but i am now playing knight c6 and i see that you have created some sort of a left control on the d4 square i'm going to capture it so what should white do here <clears throat> according to you <clears throat> now white to do white to play what to do glevin pinto thank you so much for your contribution of 40 rupees is very kind of you a lot of people have contributed today and i'm i'm very grateful to all of them okay d5 is what vajala vikram says harsh jani also d5 shriram ananta krishna says d4 no you mean d5 prathamesh divekar d5 harsh jani d5 setu minochi d5 uh chess the game of brain says e5 but e5 just loses a pawn itohan says bishop e3 okay interesting manan upadhyay d5 ritu raj um, doesn't give a correct move sushma dwivedi bishop e3 prathamesh dwivekar d5 shikhar turki d5 saurabh podar d5 aditya ramnathan bishop e3 abhishek modak d5 so clearly there are two two sides here bishop e3 and d5 very interesting okay so i made the move bishop e3 and i can see all of you shouting out there hey you told us if you have the bishop pair you shouldn't give up the bishop pair well guys you know there's no hard and fast rule in chess there are only guidelines and if you have the bishop pair you must either preserve it or convert it into another advantage so here with bishop e3 cd bishop d4 yes i lose my bishop pair but what did i gain can someone tell me what did i gain here after bishop e3 takes 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 and this position what is it that white has gained here Uh, Kumar Paurush thank you so much for your contribution of 100 rupees very very kind of you uh, thanks for that what has white gained after bishop e3 cd bd4 knight d4 queen d4 arnav maheshwari rightly points out weak d6 pawn good Adit Bhatia says space very good this is excellent Anand Sivaraman says trading advantages excellent Rick Gupta space Manan Upadhyay central queen okay d6 is weakness says cute babies Kulk Anish says d6 is weak fantastic Itohan says space advantage well guys you are really really good i mean so the point is i have more space i am clamping down with these two pawns this is slightly weak i don't think i can win it because he can always defend it with rook d8 perhaps even required knight e8 but i traded my bishop pair advantage for space and this is what you do in life as well yeah you trade something 
for something else for example you earn money and then you use that money to actually buy food you use the food to get energy you use that energy to actually work you work to get money oh, it looks like a vicious circle but anyway so the point is you are always converting one advantage into another uh, and in this case fight is slightly better i would say although he's lost the bishop pair he has space i i can imagine myself going b4 rook c1 rook d1 perhaps if required f3 i don't know if it's necessary but then slowly i may even think of f4 and try to go for e5 push or just put my bishop on f3 you know there are many possibilities here black is not lost or anything white has a small edge by the way to all the people who suggested d5 the reason i didn't go for this move is he jumps in with his knight and then i say hey i want to remove your knight from here i play bishop e3 he says i am not going out i play e5 and the position is closed okay by the way a closed now listen to me very carefully yeah? I, everyone is listening carefully i hope uh, no one goes away just stay in here for a few minutes a closed position favors bishops okay please let me know your thoughts on this statement a closed position favors bishops okay i you know i'm teaching all of you and you are all nodding your head hopefully understanding what i'm i'm trying to say so a closed position favors the bishops you see the position is closed here completely oops and the bishops are very happy okay how many of you agree with this statement by the way jaydeep chakraborty has contributed 100 rupees thank you jaydeep he says what's your thought on the black lion for black please answer when you have time not to disturb the flow okay uh, just to say black lion is an interesting opening i played the philidor a lot in my life but never gone for this sort of g5 idea which simon williams says in his dvds um yeah it's slightly passive i would say if you have openings like e4 e5 or sicilian why would someone go for black lion that's the question but you know it's a it's a playable opening and yesterday you know i was discussing with vidit and you should see that video vidit discussing the game between mvl and nepo in french and he told me you know why should nepo play french he should have maybe gone for his knight or and i asked him is french a bad opening he said no it's not a bad opening it's just that the possibilities for white are a lot more to get an advantage try for an advantage then it would be in say the sicilian or e4 e5 which are more strong openings so i would say philidor is not winning for white or better for white it just gives white more options to play for an advantage you know somehow try different things and you need to do, know a lot more things it's not a stable opening okay so my question was a closed position favors the bishops and i am very happy that all of you are awake you know what i do here being an online class i you have to be careful what i say because you know someone is online saying closed position favors the bishops and suddenly internet goes off and he is like for the rest of his life he remembers closed position <laughs> favors bishops that would be horrible but in my normal class i would just put in a wrong statement and then everyone if they are just nodding their head i would be like come on guys you're sleeping and uh, here i am so happy that all of you have said no closed positions favor knights not bishops so very good uh, all of you are awake it seems 9 o'clock is a good time to start yeah every day good 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 everyone is still saying false sagar you know we hate you and all of that okay <laughs> so going back to this i didn't want to close the position for my bishop so i played bishop e3 and my opponent said hey i am going to make you close the position by all means close it so my move here white to move what will you play okay 
what should white play here? By the way, also again, coming to this, closed positions favors knights is a generalized statement, true in most cases, but exceptions, of course, exist. No spring chicken says it's 2 p.m. here. Where are you? 2 p.m. That means you're somewhere in Australia, New Zealand, yeah? Shanks says, is this daily? Yes, Shanks, this is daily. You have to come every day because you see, once you start this, sort of thought process I want you to fine tune it every day we are just beginning so okay <clears throat> so some moves Honi Arora says DC5 Saurabh Podar says DE5 Shushma Dvivedi Knight D5 Itohan Knight D5 I'm not going to read out the right answer by the way <laughs> right now so this is a very nice position I like it Hema Lagu Logu D E Phi Srihari Joshi D Phi Janil Patel D Phi Saurabh Podar D E Phi Virinchi Night D uh, Sorry Virinchi says Night D Phi Namrata Rao D Phi Prathamesh Divekar N D Phi Amaya Nigudkar D C Phi Saurabh Podar D E Phi Rick Gupta D E Phi Pranav Jujare D E Phi Ishan Chess DE5. Again, you know, a little bit more lines would be helpful rather than saying just one move. Say a little bit more DE5 or DC5. Do you think opponent will take with the D pawn or the B pawn? If you take DE5, will he take with the queen, knight, or the pawn? Just, you know, let's try to go deeper. I know this is an online session. You are at home. You are, you know, relaxed, sort of. But if you work hard now, you get better. Yeah, the main aim is that when this entire thing related to Corona ends, you're a better chess player. So for that, work hard. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so, so many of you, well, all those who said D5 here, I think you're not awake. You are awake with your eyes open, but you are not literally awake because then after knight d4, we come to the same position which we discussed just a few minutes ago. I don't want to close the position for my bishop. All those who said dc5 and d5, good job because you are at least thinking that look, I want to open up the position for my bishop. So knight d5, knight d4, uh, sorry, knight d5, take first, take and knight d4. And I think. This knight somehow is pretty good on d4 and black is able to maintain some kind of a balance. I would still say white may be slightly better here because of the bishop pair. But this knight is, is very good. Okay. So I was sitting at the board, you know, I've read this reassess your chess. My opponent has played e5 and thinking, hey, my bishop should be open. I shouldn't close the position for my bishop. But you know, one thing which I, which I feel very important is in chess, you need a lot of willpower. Why do I say willpower? It's because all your learnings, if you want to apply them on the board, you need willpower to actually try to see and make it work. It's very easy to say, hey, there are two moves, d5 and d5, looks okay, maybe knight d5. But if you have the willpower that, no, I want to keep the position open for my bishops, you will find a good move here. Okay, this is why um, you see top players often thinking like this, like putting their hand on their head, thinking so hard because they want to convert their knowledge, what they have into good results on the board. And that's how chess is different from, I would say, studies, because in the studies, you, you read something, you go to an exam, you write it down. But on chess, you read something and suddenly something resembling it comes, not the same thing. And that's why you have to be right, very alert. And that's why all the people who said the move, Bishop G5, okay, I want, I think I can read a few names, Prab Prabol Ghosh, Tharun, I think also Arnav Maheshwari said it, someone else, Ayush Singh, um, Vishal Kumar, 
BG5. And I was so happy with this move when I found it on the board. It was like, I don't care for this pawn, you know, just the rule that keep the position open for your bishops help me find this move. It is like my next move is knight d5 and this is going to be really difficult for black uh, to, to handle. So you have to sit down and think, you know, if he tries to defend bishop e6, this pawn here, I can go d5 and win a piece. So that's not working out for him. He took knight d4. Okay. And I said, well, let's jump in. Suddenly, my position, this, this guy, there's a pin here, looks amazing. Okay. And, you know, he's now in trouble. He can't take this knight because the queen is hanging. So he decided to play queen d7. But maybe queen d8 was a possibility keeping the pawn. Now, if he played queen d8, what do you do here? All the people who, who are here, you know, you have sacrificed a pawn in this position. How do you continue here? Jaydeep Chakrabarti says, why not f4? Okay, interesting. By the way, uh, Anand Sivraman says, my only worry here was after bishop g5, I presume that's what Anand Sivraman is asking h6 but Anand you have a very strong move here you don't need to move your bishop you can just jump in attack the queen so that doesn't work h6 we moves you can even take this and then pick up this pawn so that is not working he played uh, knight d4 knight d5 and now we are looking at queen d8 what do you do very good all of you are really like alert f4 Ravi Kumar, uh, Arnav Maheshwari f4, Honi Arora f4, Reshu Jain f4, excellent guys. I'm, I'm very proud of you that you all are Virinchi, Bhola Das, Rohit, Rahul Rohit, Shushma Dvivedi f4, excellent. f4 opens up another line and you know this guy is sweating at the moment. He says I can't move, I can't do anything, what should I do? And uh, next move, I'm just going to pick up this and suddenly the king is sweating in the corner. So white is winning here, uh, definitely. <clears throat> okay, so my opponent said, fine, you jump in with the knight. I'm going to play queen d7 and I think it was a, it was a good move by him. He, he's a resourceful player, he's a strong player. So he played queen b7 and I said, okay, now the knight is no longer pinned. So I took it with my bishop. The reason for taking with the bishop was simple because I wanted to keep my strong knight in the center and after gf6 we come to an important position here uh, where white to move you know this is this is not simple stuff it's a little bit complex but still I'll give it a try for all of you to, to do it there are many possibilities here which is related with opening up the position but there's one move which is strong and I, I hadn't seen it during the game and that's why let's see uh, Mikhail Botwinik asks a good question <laughs> he says why is d into c5 d into c5 bishop g5 not stronger because then you know you don't even sacrifice a pawn and you are jumping in well, the only problem is with bishop e6 it kind of stops it and i don't have a pawn on d4 to push and fork these two pieces here so that's the reason why i don't want to exchange i played bishop g5 first and now take take and white to move here okay f4 all of you sakti kiran harsh suryavanshi punit jain Shank says I would never play BG5 as well the, the idea of this entire camp is to start doing things which you never did okay so don't worry if you never played BG5 but just be alert of the things knowing a few rules can often help you to come to the right conclusion of many times it also takes you to the wrong conclusion okay but knowing the rules is good okay 
F4 is what everyone wants to do here and this is what I played. Shanks and Ujwal say BG4. Yes, interesting stuff. You want to go BG4, but have you considered all the options for your opponent? You know, when you play BG4, what can black do? That's what I want, that you make a move and you think of possibilities for your opponent as well. Because bishop g4, I think what black can really do here is f5, you know. And then if he can get in f6, suddenly the queen is defending the king and everything is okay, you know. So I don't really want him to do that. <coughs> so my question here, and I think uh, no one has been able, ah, Vishal Kumar, Vishal you are you either you are very strong okay uh, or you are you are going to be very strong but you found the right move so well done and by the way everyone here please don't use engines yeah that's you you should be focused on the class you want to improve yeah you don't want to impress me what will you get by impressing me yeah nothing you should be playing for yourself improving so if you are using an engine please don't do it yeah Queen d2 is what I think is a great move. Very difficult to play. Uh, the threat is queen h6. I'm also ready to give up this bishop. Just play king h1 because then it will be a forced mate. Also our plan, this f5 move is no longer possible because the queen jumps in uh, with a check here. Uh, in this position. And so that's the reason why nothing of this sort works king g7 is the only move here for black and now i play the move uh, f4 and i think overall in just putting in these two moves queen d2 and king g7 helps black helps white a lot in this attack you know he's just winning now uh, in the game what i did was i played first f4 which is the most natural move like all of you said here but then my opponent was right on the ball and he played the move f5 here and this is what i should have prevented you know this is known as prophylaxis we will come to it in the future sessions very important to know what your opponent's plan is and to stop it so after f4 f5 i said okay i will play uh, what did I do here? Fe5. Yeah, I took here. He took here. And next move, I went Ef5. Okay. And my opponent picked up this guy here. So my next question, maybe one of the last questions related to this game. What should white do here? Yeah, Mikhail Botwinik says, doesn't queen d2 any to lose a tempo? But look, if you take this guy here after queen d2, you are actually giving up a very strong piece of yours on d4. And I'm happy to lose a tempo for that. So we reach this position and it's... Uh, white to move come on guys white to move here what should you do uh, omkar chakradev says bd3 instead of f4 okay interesting uh, just going back i'm sorry uh, if i'm moving back and forth but bd3 also looks interesting but maybe again f5 has to be considered ef and this time maybe i'll not uh, take this pawn because you know you have all these ideas with queen g4 in the air but i could play f6 and yeah maybe maybe this is good for white or i think bd3 is a very um how, sh how should i put it nice laid back kind of a move um, maybe king h8 with the idea of rook g8 should be thought of here but Definitely possible. Not a bad move. Uh, f4, f5 takes, takes bishop f5. 
how many of you are interested to sacrifice your rook yes i see a few anmol bhagat i see said that nimish lavanya harshini anand <coughs> well done guys it's not your game so just sacrifice the material yeah <laughs> no of course you you are you're working hard here uh, and i i respect that basically rook f5 just makes a lot of sense the point is after knight f5 i just played uh, next move here without much thought i did bishop d3 here but i think it's it's a it's a decent move bishop d3 and now my opponent went knight e7 and i think uh, let's try to finish him off now what do you do here with white i think there are several ways to finish him off uh, i think i didn't choose the best way here the the best way uh, let's try to see sagar gule says snehal sir is my coach at navi mumbai well sagar just tell snehal that i remember him uh, uh, a very good player and please give my greetings to him if you meet him during this period don't meet him by the way corona but after the thing ends yeah so again think if you make a move what will your opponent do always think of that if you think that way you will not go wrong often okay so here you sacrificed material you must play it carefully juan says 4:30 in the morning oh man where are you not even europe maybe somewhere far west europe because it's 4 and 1/2 it should be 9 then in india but it's 10 so knight f6 says say people okay guys let's make a rule here okay the rule is if you give one move i won't read it out give me more moves if you give knight f6 check what will your opponent do next will he resign the game will he play on okay so don't give me one moves now knight f6 check if king g7 what's your plan so the variation which after king g7 which i felt was strong and i think uh, yeah i played queen g4 in the game by by the way so here um queen g4 is possible because after you take this it's almost gone position is lost king has no squares you have to sacrifice and this will be uh, a dangerous position but i think king h8 is possible here or not really oh uh, sorry knight g6 is possible so that is the problem um but bishop e4 is a nice move here which i hadn't considered and after queen c8 queen f3 attacking this guy here rook b8 and then knight h5 check king g8 and somehow it's not very trivial you know if you go kind of in here trying to checkmate then he jumps with his queen to g4 and it's not like the game is getting over i have to be a little bit smarter play queen e3 threatening queen h6 or queen g5 check and then f5 maybe bd5 check knight d5 this is some line which i had mentioned here before i think it's some time back and i i get a winning attack but you know in the game i went queen g4 check here which just shows one of my big drawbacks as a chess player when i was playing i couldn't finish off the attack so well after this knight f6 king g7 i got another piece and when he played rook a d8 i think i went uh, what queen g5 here and i was i was actually hoping that you know he takes this i'll give a check 
he can't go here because it's a mate and if he goes anyway here i'll go queen f6 and it's a checkmate so but he played this nice move rook d6 and uh, i played bishop e4 and now you know he he was thinking for his move and i was thinking oh my god have i just botched up such a nice position no, i can't see a mate very clearly and he played the move queen c8 what's wrong with this move that's my question final question about this game what's wrong with this move okay i know there were a lot of options i'll leave it up to you to analyze this game in some detail later on but now you have to find the winning move for white what should how should white win this you know the main thing was that this queen on the second rank was so important defending everything moving it to c8 really opened up with knight h5 check king here and then i went queen h6 well done all those who said queen is required on the seventh rank you're very right and then after rook g8 i just went in with rook f7 and yeah the game is over h7 is gone there is no way to defend he gave a couple of checks i came up he gave a check if i was very bold at that point and you know i wasn't because i was not very strong for being bold you need strength i could have gone king e3 but i took the rook and i said okay piece up is good enough and i won the game later <clears throat> and i i you know when i was 17 years old when i played this game i wrote i won this thrilling encounter with lots of exclamation marks lots of exclamation marks and uh, i said many mistakes by both sides but white's play nonetheless was very innovative now why is this game chosen for the first session today very simply because after reading the book i went to this event and i played this game and i was thinking in terms of what silman told me what did silman say i have not yet discussed but whatever he said i was thinking let's now have a look at what are the things that actually jeremy silman says when assessing a position what are the things that have to be taken care of okay i'm going to open this i have prepared this so all those who would like can just take a screenshot you know of this or of course better get this book but in general you can take a screenshot of this so what used to happen is i used to i read this so which is superior minor piece second is pawn structure third is space fourth is material fifth is control of an open file or a weak square Sixth is lead in development. Seventh is initiative, and eighth point, which was not mentioned in the book, but I added it, is king safety. You know, I was a bit surprised that he didn't consider it, and that all these things are, by the way, included in this new book because that's what he gives seven points, and he said these are the points on which you should assess a position. And then many people say, hey, but if the king is getting mated, what? And then he said, okay, let me include that as well. So. now the point is let's try to understand how i learned so when i went through these points and i studied each point like superior minor piece what to do with it pawn structure what to do with it space material control of an open file i kept them in mind and every position that i would get so coming back to our game here which was this position when i asked you how do you assess this position for both sides i would say okay what was point number 1 ah minor pieces i have the bishop pair okay i have a small edge there then i would say okay what's the second point ah material 
okay material is equal both sides have same material fine nothing to worry there what was the third point uh, space white has some more space it seems but not really i mean this is a tough point sometimes it was very difficult to understand what but yeah after e4 i did get space so yes space is little bit on white side you can say and then i would say what was the fourth point there and then i would kind of remember see i'm forgetting what was the fourth point can anyone remind me okay snehal is here by the way in the chat this is wonderful you know snehal uh, being such a such a good sport says good game sagar by the way i must mention snehal is a is a very well known coach now he he lives in panvel am i right and uh, he well he, we have had many games he's beaten me often uh, and uh, thanks snehal for being here and uh, okay what is it mati um, what was the fourth point open files yeah good 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 everyone try to be alert open files or what was it weak squares how was it fourth was material ah pawn structure this is what i missed pawn structure is important so when i talk about pawn structure it's like pawns are all simple here no weak pawns as such you can say d6 slightly weak but the pawn structure really determines sometimes you have doubled pawns sometimes backward pawns so you had uh, minor pieces pawn structure um material space then we move to the fifth point which was open files weak squares and all of that no open files can be seen right now so i don't but then weak square are there any weak squares i didn't see them as such and then you move to the first five are kind of static advantages okay i'll come to what is static and dynamic and the last two are dynamic imbalances okay which is initiative and development so who has the better development in this position maybe both and who has the better who has the initiative again not so sure initiative is basically the one who's creating threats i don't think so you see and king safety both the kings are safe by the way when i was doing this it used to take so much time it was like hey i'm doing this seven points eight points and suddenly i look at the clock and it's like oh my god i have given up five minutes on the clock seven minutes on the clock and i'm like should i do this every move now he plays b6 should i again start doing this but you know what happens in general and this is about everything in life once you start practicing it it becomes natural to you you know you start becoming better at it and that's the reason why i would recommend all of you to start at some point you know it may seem difficult now but after let's say a a few days doing this regularly it will be more like hmm okay i have the bishop pair space and all material everything looks equal king is safe yeah there's an open file here there's a weak square and you are suddenly you know moving faster in this entire thing you know this entire thing you are moving faster and that's how you improve you you learn something and make it a part of your subconscious you make it so good that that you don't even know that you learned it okay well <clears throat> okay so the point is what 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 i wanted to say is that we are going to look at this every imbalance in detail in our this one over here if you look at it we are going to look at all of these in detail in the next 21 days and then you will be able to assess it assess positions better no matter what position comes your way you will be able to understand them okay by the way i must thank mayur gondalekar he's my good friend he's from japan he's played uh, he's he's given 2 200 japanese currency what, what do you call it? is it a yen yeah japanese uh, yeah just 
okay maybe you can tell me and he's given 200 thank you so much mayur for joining in tomorrow it will be again at 9 am so do join in uh, <clears throat> so the point is let's discuss each and every of this imbalance in detail and once we discuss each of them you will be becoming better okay and in between we'll make it fun we'll make it interactive uh, and uh, yeah some people say sir opening ka bhi discussion oh please discuss opening some may say please discuss end games but what i think is chess is a lot about thinking if i can improve your thought process how you are thinking you can do well in the openings you know this opening here you guys played it well even though you didn't know the openings the important thing is to learn how to think and then you can do everything well okay so guys i'm going to uh call it a day today it's 10 20 now uh i i know that playing an online game and then analyzing it would be nice but it would mean that we will overstep the time limit by a big margin uh and uh I need to do a few other things for the day candidates round eight coming up today and uh, let's just take a few questions here so that we can say goodbye um, natural talent says one of the best lessons I've seen so far thank you so much I'm, I'm very happy Harsh Suryavanshi says do you know Onkar Jadav yes I know him he's a coach from Nashik I've met him before uh, Shank says my end game knowledge is very poor. Well, I will hopefully give you some suggestions to improve on it. How can I ask doubts related to this game after the video? By the way, a very important thing. Yesterday I gave three homeworks. Uh, and, you know, let me just pull this up for you here. Oops. And the three homeworks were mentioned here. I hope that all of you did it. I, I did write it down so as to not forget. Yes, this is the thing. And at the end of it, I did write work on tactics. Did you guys work on tactics? You know, please do it. If you work on your tactics, you're going to get better anywhere. Use any platform. Use chess-based trainer, uh, like the chess-based premium account, or do it from some books, whatever it is. Second, get your notations 100% correct who started working on the notations i hope you have all done that and three did any of you play an online game and analyze it if you did it wonderful it's excellent and i'm going to uh, i would like to say there's a viewer named rahul rohit i think maybe i'm getting the name wrong but rahul rohit he wrote a mail on chess india at gmail saying sir I have done everything which you said yesterday. I'm excited for day two. It made me feel really good that he actually followed up on what we discussed. Okay. So what's the homework for today? Okay. I'm going to give work on tactics as a constant homework. Let's put it one hour. Yeah. Let's do it one hour at least. I don't like putting time as such, but just as a advice. Uh, the second thing is, work on your notations please take it seriously you might think it's not the most important but all of this training is useless if you don't get your notations right it's like saying ah, i'll play the knight to b6 but when it's actually g6 you know lastly i would like you to remember the list of imbalances and think about it okay seven point eight points sorry which was Okay, let me see if I can get it right this time. Minor pieces, pawn structure, material, space, open files, weak squares, initiative, development, king safety. Okay, get it into your head. If you can get it now, better. Okay, and lastly, I think do what you like. Uh, tomorrow, we will meet again. This is day two work that we will be uh, that i'll be discussing tomorrow and if you learned something if you are enjoying this do give your feedback at chessbase india at gmail today a lot of people contributed i'm i'm so 
glad that all of you did that thank you uh, and uh, yeah let's just see if anyone else prema vincent says next time can you use less hard words i'm eight <laughs> okay okay i want to also know how many here from different countries how many people here uh, uh, of course there are many indians but do we have some some others uh, jaydeep chakrabarti says making silman simple possibly or maybe making it more complex i don't know you will get to know in the days to come uh good session says anmol bhagat Puneet Jain says, "Do you need Pras? Do you know Prasanji Datta? Yes, of course, he's a good trainer in Delhi, and also uh, he teaches in Northeast, I think, in Tripura." Uh, Man Manu Adish says, "Keep up your good and sincere work." Thank you. Ahmed Justin says, "What advice can you give to a 1600 rated rated player so that he can reach 2000?" Well, Ahmed. i hope you attended this session and you will do so in the next 19 days that's what we are discussing and you will become a better player okay thank you say saurab singh suresh bors uh, mohak agarwal says what rating group is this class suitable for i would say anywhere between unrated to rated players i am sure there are many strong players also here uh, so just if you understand it it's a class for you i wouldn't say i wouldn't put a stamp saying only for 1200 or 1400 or something like this um thank uh, anyone else you yeah, are feeling nice says saurabh singh dandapani says thank you so much who okay lot of messages difficult to see which ones are actually important mayur says from japan uh, he is from japan yeah okay i i asked who are from different countries okay rauni arujo says brazil i think it must be very early in the morning rauni itahans at idahosa says us wonderful prema vincent australia rajesh kumar nair says i enjoy your analysis with vidit thank you manu adish says i'm from africa wonderful Uh, great to have you argentina says natural talent arjun ayer loved the explanations wonderful i'm I, i think we have a great crowd here everyone no one spamming that's wonderful no one writes some message again 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 that means you are all serious about what we are doing here and uh, yeah okay so that's all for today guys uh, if you have any questions please write to me at chessbaseindia@gmail and tomorrow we meet at 9 am here same place okay on the chessbase india youtube channel thank you for joining in. and all those who have not subscribed to the channel please do so that would be very nice of you this is sagar shah calling it a day bye bye